We didn't want to win that one anyway, did we? Bigger fish to fry in a week's time. We've got our suits measured for Wembley. It's the Liverpool match vlog coming up and it's a very rare bad day at the office for Newcastle and in particular, Mr Mick Pope. It's all coming up, so stick around. <laughs> Welcome back to Black and White Banter, you lovely, lovely Newcastle fans. Um, been a bit busy lately, so not many videos coming out, didn't even get time to do a match preview, but here we are, just bounced out the shower, despite it being a bit wet and a bit gl gloomy outside, just about to head over to St James's Park now, Liverpool, Pfft, it's a funny one this, isn't it? I didn't get a chance to say on the match preview, yes we want a result, yes, it's a big game, normally a huge game, Liverpool at home, but we all thinking about next week. And I don't care what anyone says, every fan in that stadium, win, lose or draw tonight, will be frustrated if we lose, especially after the run we're on. And the fact it's the only team that's, that's beat us, which is crazy, by the way. If anyone needs a reality check, we are coming up against the only team in February who's beaten us this season. So that's, that's revenge for the only team that we can get revenge on. But generally speaking, we're all thinking about Wembley, aren't we? We're all thinking about Wembley next week. I certainly am already thinking about getting on that train first thing next Saturday morning, but it would be great to go into a win. We, we desperately need one, to be honest. A lot of people pushing for this Champions League football are very much talking about the gap that we can increase on Liverpool by winning this today. I think it's 12 points, so fingers crossed we can put on a better performance than Bournemouth that was poor. But hey, let's enjoy it tonight under the lights. Sad news about Christian Atsu today, really, really sad. That was really awful to hear. Um, caught me off guard. Same age as me, so to really really awful so thoughts definitely go out to him and his family i'm sure there'll be a tribute tonight tragic tragic news um so bobby robson it's his 90th birthday today the man the legend that is sir bobby there's going to be a war flags display so i cannot wait to get over to see that but without further ado let's get to st james's park just landed in newcastle team news is out elliot anderson the geordie maradona is in i didn't expect that i really really didn't i know we've had injuries i didn't get a chance to talk about it on the preview He's probably had his hands tied a little bit with week, next weekend in mind. But Elliot Anderson, I wanted him out on loan in the Championship at the start of the year and he's done very little since, very little game time, but he's looked a little bit fish out of water when he's actually played minutes for us. This is a huge opportunity for him. And I think if looking at the rest of the team, if we are going to get anything today compared to previous weeks, we need to be a bit better in the final third. Almiron needs to offer a bit more. Just generally speaking, we need to offer a little bit more in final thirds. And Alan St. Maximin, Keeps getting a chance on the wing. He's got Gordon breaking, breathing down his neck. Hopefully he can do a little bit more. So let's see. Let's get up to St James's Park. Away Eddie Howe's Wembley Mags. A bit late today. Let's get it out there. Half time. 2-0. That was pretty bad. Um, strange first half, really strange. I, th I think there's there's been a performance and a result maybe like this bubbling for a while. Um, you know, looking back at the West Ham, Bournemouth, pretty poor going forward, a little bit lacklustre defensively. Obviously Nick Pope, it's all I need to talk about at half time, Nick Pope. Absolutely devastated, more devastated for him. I feel sick for him. He comes and gets that ball 90% of the time and it's fine. One time he doesn't, decides to use his hand, is the week before a cup final. I'm absolutely devastated we're going to be up without him next week. I think everyone in the stadium is thinking about that right now. This game looks pretty done and dusted. We started absolutely fantastic. First 10, 15 minutes, we proper came out the traps. We were going all guns blazing. Now, that, that's the intensity that we haven't had for a while. And then they have two super punches, poor defending for us for both goals. Then Nick Pope does what he does, and it's just we all start looking at each other, bewildered because we aren't used to seeing this anymore. This is Newcastle of old, so very flat. Don't really know what we can get out of that second half. St. Maximin's had a couple of half. He's he's actually looked okay holding the line now by himself. Even harder job for him. Let's just see what we do in the second half. Maybe get a bit of luck. You need a bit of luck to come back when you've got ten men like this. Fingers crossed we can pull something out of the bag. I think I need a pint. That was difficult.
Right, I'm joined by Jack. He's just come out of the game, as we all have. Jack, try and sum up what was probably one of the worst days at the St James's Park office for a very long time. I think, look, Liverpool, they're, they're a good team. They're going to have good performances, bad performances. But I think Pope's setting off probably the worst bit about the game because obviously he's missing next week. I don't know. I've heard maybe Carries is in general or whatever, so we don't know who's going to start next week. And then I think I think we're actually all right in terms of with 10 men, but just it was gone at that point, wasn't it? We needed a half chance to sneak in to have a chance, but I had pretty poor idea at the office. And with regards to Nick Pope, I feel sick for him. Don't even want to know what he's going through right now. What was he thinking? I, I mean, I was the same. I think you, two 0 you've got to let it go. But then, I, my dad probably said, probably summed it right. If you miss it with your head, it's natural instinct to try and make up for it and just stop it with your arms. It's instinct, like, instinct. I think that's probably. So, do you think there's a bit of a hangover from? Sorry, not a hangover. Going into the Wembley game, do you think that's had a bit of effect in the last couple of weeks or not? I think we've looked. I mean. Not with set high, with really high standards, haven't we? And I mean, the pressing's been dead short. I think we've got a little bit of sharpness last last few weeks since the World Cup, really. I mean, we turned Leicester over, but then after that, we haven't really had a, a great performance where we've been sharp. We've had chances, look, we could have won. We could be had another three wins, but I think we've just lacked a little bit. It's hard to keep that intensity up the full season, I think. I think that's where we're struggling. Depth. We've got no depth, really, haven't we? And I'm just joined by Chris as well. He's just come out with that, soaking in what, sorry, taking in what was. Probably one of the worst days at the office in recent times in St James's Park. What went wrong today? I don't know, mate. It's like it's it's a funny one. Like, yes, we didn't play great, but I feel, as I say, with the putting a light on next week, I think the, the worst thing about the day was the Pope incident. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like at the end of the day, like losing two 0 home to Liverpool. Yes, this time last year would have been still our reach, but where we come, it's great, man. You know, mm. it's. But you know, uh, I think that's the, that's the main downside today. You know what I mean? It's it's losing Paul for the final. I think and that's like, that's yeah. the thing that's leaving. I mean, I'm thinking about it coming out of the stadium. I felt sick for him yeah, at the time. Not just not the fact we're missing him, but the fact that what he must be going yeah, through. No, no, Christ! I don't. I say I don't want to know what he's feeling. He's been so good for the season. Like, like look, I, I say I think I don't know what's going to happen next weekend. I think we've got Bruno back. Mm-hmm. You know, it's good, and uh, hopefully Willick and Wilson will be fit, and it, it'll be. It's got a, the the outfield ten will look probably a bit stronger, but again, it's just Pope at the back. It's going to be funny. But like, I, like today, I'm not really. I say I don't go to a lot of matches if I'm honest. Like, right. I, but uh, like yes, so like it was a disappointing result. I think second half we played Arit, we kept them at bay. But I think yeah, no, it was a, it was a poor defender for the first two goals. Right, yeah, I'm well, just joined by Josh who is struggling at the moment, so he's taking his time out to speak to us on his crutches. So fair play. I'm still here. Um, <laughs> Who a day at the office today, very disappointing, um, obviously with Nick Pope in mind as well. What do you think went wrong today? I, I don't think it was anything down to you know a tactical thing, a tactical decision from how. I think we came out the traps pretty good in the first five minutes. And then it felt like we just couldn't deal with the pressure. You know, Liverpool quieting the crowd um, after ten minutes or so. I just, like you said it before, I think it was just a bad day at the office. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, see, I, I, I said to the lad next to me, I feel like a, a result like this has been bubbling for a while. You know, with the Bournemouth game, the West Ham game. There's a few draws, do you know yeah, what I mean? And, and I yeah. think we said before the match, uh, me and the lad, that it was if we come out with a loss, it's fine because it's on everyone's mind is the final is, next week it is. I mean, obviously Eddie Owney's press conference said next game which he has to say that but I, I listened to that and I thought anyway there's no way the long staffs and the burns are not thinking about next week well exactly I mean it's on it, it doesn't even matter if you're from Newcastle it'll be on Trippier's mind it'll be on Joe exactly. mind and it's just I, I feel like that was probably the, the deciding factor um, and once you go two goals down it's always a trek for, back from yeah. then I, I don't blame Pope. I think it was a silly decision. I think it was instinct. It was. It was. Second half, no complaints. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Liverpool sit back, um, soak up the pressure. Mm-hmm. And we had a couple of chances. Oh, Callum, but Callum Wilson in the second know, half. That Callum left foot, and he just lifted over the keeper. But do you know what? I'm happy. I've yeah. come away from this game. You're getting your suit measured. I'm getting my suit measured. <laughs> Obviously, I'm going, he's not, because he can't get the time off work. But do you well, know what? It's difficult for you, to, for you to get your suit measured. I know. Which well, is fine. Right, I'm not used to doing these. 
probably is the worst game. Well, I say the worst game. It wasn't actually the worst performance. It's St James's Park in sort of the last year, which is a mental thing to say in itself. First defeat since August, which again, we always need perspective. We are allowed to criticise performances, which is becoming a new thing in the Newcastle fan world now. Because of how far we've come, you aren't allowed to say any player's bad. You're not allowed to say anything, apparently, on social media at the moment. It wasn't the worst performance. I thought we started today absolutely fantastic. Liverpool couldn't handle us. Almiron has to score. If that goes in, it's a different start to that first half. And we just came out the traps faster than I've seen the last three, four, five matches. So Eddie Howe's got into them, I think, after that Bournemouth match last week. And then from there, I don't really know what's happened. Um, a couple of goals has been bubbling for a while. Maybe a couple of lapses in con- concentration has been bubbling for a while. We don't have the squad rotation of the other teams in that top four, top five. It's the same team week in, week out. And I haven't watched the goals back yet. I've heard that maybe Trippier and Cher have stood still for a couple of them. They looked a little bit too straightforward to me. And, yeah, to be 2-0 down after the start we had, it was like, shit, my God, what's just happened? And then as for Nick Pope, I've just spoken to fans there. They've all mentioned him straight away. That's the one that leaves a bit of taste in the mouth. Today, you can accept getting beat off Liverpool. I said at the start of the match, because Wembley next week is the biggest game in the history of games for me. Everyone's thinking about Wembley, you're thinking about the trains, what cans they've taken. The thought of winning a cup is just a crazy thought. It's Nick Pope not being available for that that's left the bitter taste as I go for a pint tonight. It really is, and I have watched that back at half-time. It's just instinct, and I feel so, I felt sick to the stomach when it happened. And he'll f- imagine what Nick Pope's going through. The poor bloke has been fantastic for us. And now he has to deal. He's in the form of his life. First cup final of his life, I think. And he's, he's not going to be playing. I feel so, so sorry for him. It looks like Karayas might have to play for us because Dubravka's cup tied and Darlow's out on loan, which is weird. And it's just Newcastle doing a Newcastle. I posted it on my Facebook page. No matter what this club, what happens to this club, we will always find a way of doing a Newcastle. Nick Pope sorts them out 90% of the time, no problems. The week before the cup final, he handles it. And generally speaking, I think Eddie Howe will actually take a lot of positives away from the day, which sounds strange. I thought second half with 10 men, we had loads of the ball because Liverpool sat in. If Callum Wilson scores in the last 10 minutes, which is a great chance, it's a different end of the game because Liverpool are a bit dodgy at the back. So we've had a couple of chances today at different spells and it, we don't get many days like this. And again, I talked about at the start just, just early about perspective. This feels like what we were so used to before the takeover to, to be leaving early and staying for a bit of a longer drink at half time. But there is just so much bigger things on the horizon and I do think that's played a factor. I do. Not because players are jumping out of tackles because they are th- their thoughts are fully with next week. Eddie Howe can say what he wants about them taking one game at a time. We've still played okay today, but Wembley is huge for every single one of them players. And now it's just on to that. We can't dwell on this. Yes, we're in bad form. Would we have liked to have been in this form going into the biggest game in our recent history? Of course not, but anything can happen in a cup final. It's a totally different day. Man United have got a game on Sunday. They've got Barcelona three days before. Anything could happen injury-wise for Man United. We are going to out-sing them. We're going to out-run them, I would likely, I would hope. And, you know, Newcastle's team probably picks itself to a degree. I mean, some performances today, just on the back of that, I thought St Maximin today was much, much better. He had to be if he was going to get in that cup final team. And I thought he was. He caused Liverpool a lot of problems. He had a chance in the first half. I'm not a big fan of St Maximin still, so I don't know whether he would start next week for me, but he was better. Um, Botman again was great. Joe Linton just does Joe Linton. I think he's pulled us through without Bruno, if I'm being totally honest with you. Without, Bru- without Joe Linton in that middle in the last two or three matches, we'd be absolutely F U C K, if I'm being honest. But hey, Newcastle fans, we weren't that bad and we played most of that game with 10 men. We were resilient. We've had a bad day at the office defensively at the back with the goals we've conceded. I am concerned about us not scoring going into that cup final. It doesn't look like it's changing. Almiron's missed today. Wilson's missed today. <sighs> Eddie Howe's got some decisions to make in that attack and, uh, that attack and midfield and up front in that cup final. I wouldn't like to be Eddie Howe this week. Sleepless nights galore. But to quote Dan Burns slightly, I'm still happy. I'm still happy because I'm going to get me suit measured because in eight days' time, we are walking up Wembley Way 
for the biggest game I've ever witnessed or been a part of and I'm so lucky and grateful to be going to Wembley next week. So we move on from this one. Yes, we're not in great form. We've lost our first game of the year at St James's Park and Liverpool are just our bogey team this season. First defeat since August, Newcastle fans. So we do take it with a pinch of salt because that is a ridiculous stat. I'll see you on the next video. I'm going to be doing lots of Wembley build-up this week. I know I've been a little bit quiet with Black and White Banner because I've had a lot going on. There is going to be a lot of build-up coming. And then, of course, as soon as I get on that boozy train, everything is going to be getting recorded. Stay positive, Newcastle fans. Enjoy the rest of your weekend because we have got one of the biggest weeks in the history of weeks coming up. And I cannot wait to go and watch Eddie Howe's Wembley mags. Might not have been the best day at the office today, but we haven't had any of them for a while. And don't forget that. I'll see you on the next one. How are you, the lads?